this pandemic gonna teach all of us at the same time about this A B equipment. You know. <laughs> y'all come on, y'all come on in here. Pray for us. Yes. We trying to stream songs and thank you, God. Yes, yes. All right. And here we go. And yes. Yes. What does the voice of God sound like? What does the voice of God sound like? Ladies and gentlemen, this is um, a very interesting title to uh, a topic that probably cannot be exhausted ever, ever but we plan to give you some foundational um, roots that you can use Amen. on your journey. Amen. Just for my soul ministries, we say good morning to you. You may see us on social media from time to time and wondering who are these folks? Who are these women? We are a discipleship ministry. And as you see on the screen there, our vision is peace and purpose for the soul through truth, love, and relationship. Our mission is to love and serve everyone through biblical teaching, personal testimonies, prayer, and mentoring for the glory of God. Amen. This is what we're doing. We are growing in God, and we are inviting you to come along and grow with us. It is nothing like your own personal intimate relationship. Amen. Mission and vision. And we're going to jump right in this morning just for my soul ministries. Even from the title, <laughs> hmm. is the soul. And it's going to be important that I go back and review this before we get into this lesson of what does the voice of God sound like? Hearing God, what does that sound like? Well, we have to figure out first, where do we hear him from? Mm. Where does mm -hmm. that voice resonate? <laughs> Why do we even need to hear him? Amen. Just for my soul ministries, right, Miss Linda? That's right. Amen. Just for my soul ministries, um, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day of where our title came from. Um, but that healing and purpose uh, for the human soul is definitely, definitely our vision. So it's nice to know what the soul is. Okay. This picture was drawn for us as I would um, draw this every time that I taught, um, you know, beginning new teaching sessions from our ministry. And so an artist put this together and gave it to me. And I took a picture of it so that I could share it with you as I um, refer back to the soul. This picture came to my mind and I've seen it with a lot of other spiritual leaders being used. Um, first Thessalonians 5 and 23. That's the verse I read umpteen years ago. And I wanted to draw it out to understand what does that, what, what does that mean? What does that mean? And this is the scripture that spoke so clearly to me now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, sanctify you entirely, completely, mm. and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, Thank who you, God. calls you is faithful. He who calls you is faithful. He also will do it. Amen. And I remember saying, Lord, how are you going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ms. Linda, when you study in the word of God, sometimes you just have to stop and ask him, Lord, how are you going to pull that off? Amen. How, how Amen. is that going to happen for me? <laughs> and in my imagination, this is what I drew. Being Amen. the center of us is the spirit, the deepest, most into mm. innate part of every human being okay that's the place that god's holy spirit takes over when you surrender your life to him that 
that part of you he created only for himself. That's right. The human spirit. Okay. And once that is surrendered over to him, the Holy Spirit comes inside of you and makes a home. Mm. Okay. Now you still got you to deal with. So <laughs> what is my soul? My soul is the you factor. And you see over to the right hand side of your screen, your mind, it has intellect, memory, imagination. That's the, that's the enemy's playing playground right there, the human mind. Amen. You have your own will. You have emotions. You have a conscience. What mm -hmm. is a conscience? It's a moral regulator of right and wrong, and it affects your thoughts, your desires, and your decisions. Okay? Now, I want you to picture the green part that you see on your screen. When you surrender yourself to God, Imagine the green part exploding. Yeah. Just imagine the green part exploding. Now, God fills your mind and heals the memories of your wounds and your tragedies because you've invited him to. That's right. You surrender your will, just like Jesus said, not my will, but yours be done. So your will is surrendered to God's will. Your emotions, you don't fly off the handle. You start to listen when you feel something else that, mm -mm, that's yeah. not right. Say it this way. Go back and apologize. Amen. So anger, resentment, all of these different emotions that can build up inside of us. Oh my God, when we are, when our emotions are our God, that is a horrible life. A life of bondage because your emotions can be all over the place. That's right. Oh, but when we give over that consciousness to be saturated with truth. Mm -hmm. So when we start to hear this voice inside of us saying, now you know you're wrong for that. That is your voice. Yeah. Because it's your conscience. Yeah. Which you have surrendered to God. So now he can purify that thing. Because there was a time in the day I remember my conscience didn't, there wasn't no more regulated of nothing wrong. I did what I wanted to do and slept fine. Amen. Until I started <laughs> asking God to clean me up. That's right. I started studying his word and that conscience got more God conscience. That's right. It got more purified. It got regulated with his standard. It got covered with his standard. It wasn't that um, conscious that was full of me. Yeah. All of that is your soul. And then it's all encapsulated inside a body. Mm. Your soul is your, it's the you, it's your personality. Okay. Our goal, I believe, according to the word we study, when the green part explodes into all areas of you, you surrender to God. You start yeah. to love on him and walk with him. Accept his grace and mercy on the good days and the bad days. Yeah. What comes out of the body, mm -hmm. stick with my visual here, looks like the spirit of God instead of the jacked up misguided you. That's right. Because something's coming out of your body. It's going to be you or it's going to be God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> who's going to be in control okay yeah. i would rather have you all receive <laughs> the me that's been crucified by god <laughs> amen me too Ralph. you get all of amen. my personality that's right. under the subjection of god right yes and he takes control of those emotions he takes control of that will and it is a process. Yeah, it is. That consciousness now is being regulated by his word and his will. So that feeling of wrongness. Yeah. I'm gonna let that sit right there. Yeah. 
So as we move forward in these next three lessons about what does the voice of God sound like, let's start of where the voice of God will resonate in your soul. Hang on, that's the wrong direction. Now, this next slide, bear with me, I'm pushing right and left buttons in the wrong direction. This next slide, kingdom rule, kingdom rule. If you guys are following us on Wednesday mornings, and we'll talk about that toward the end, what we do on Wednesday mornings, we've been in the book of Matthew, and we're going to be there for quite a while. We take a few scriptures, we've been taking a few scriptures, and we're now in chapter five, and we have been studying right at four to maybe five scriptures a week about this kingdom, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, okay? Now, I'm going back to, again, what does the voice of God sound like? You have to understand um, not only the soul where that voice inside of you will will resonate that mm -hmm. voice inside of you what is going to shake <laughs> your own soul what is going to transform okay understand where the voice comes from and who's speaking mm -hmm. okay so kingdom rule just a just a refresher because we have studied this several times you have god and three persons Okay, one God, three different roles. You have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I give in my little simple analogy, I'm Cheryl. I'm Cheryl the minister, I'm Cheryl the nurse, I'm Cheryl the mama, I'm Cheryl the wife, I'm Cheryl the sister, I'm Cheryl the friend. I got many roles, but it's just me. They're all Cheryl. God the Father, Isaiah 37 and 16, as you see in your screen, he's the creator. He gave us kingdom structure, kingdom rule, kingdom operation. He created everything in the, in the heavens, the universes, on earth, including you and I. Master orchestrator. Mm -hmm. It says, O oh host, O oh Lord of hosts, God of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim, you are God, you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth amen first person of the trinity then you have god the son god the son jesus christ god put on flesh and bones and hair and skin and humanity and born like we were and it says in hebrews 9 14 how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience, we just hmm. talked about that, from dead works to serve the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second person's of the Trinity job was to do just what I read. Yeah. He paid the price he was a sacrifice offered up to God without spot or blemish. It satisfied the penalty of sin. That's what God the Son's role was. And I have to read that again. That sounds so sweet. Mm -hmm. How yes. much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, Back to his father. He said, here I am. I'm going to pay the, I'm going to offer myself to you. Perfect sacrifice. Then it says, cleanse your conscience from dead works. Because we were our own God. Mm -hmm. Dead works to serve the living God. Wow. Hebrews 9 and 14. Then we have the third person of the Trinity, God, the Holy Spirit. What is his job? 
God created the kingdom, the structure, gave the principles, the rules, how it is to work. And you come on with us on Wednesday morning, we're revisiting teachings on kingdom structure. Yeah. Okay. Then you have, of course, that was broken by sin. You know the story of Adam and Eve in Genesis. Then God himself came to pay the price for that sin that man committed, being God, the, the son, Jesus Christ. So God, the Holy Spirit, what is his job? Mm -hmm. Okay, Father created us, gave us structure. He even gave us dominion, mm -hmm. universe, these bones and flesh and heart. All of it works because of his majestic or order Amen. the son came and paid our price now the price for sin now what is the holy spirit's part and it reads here john 14 16 through 17 and i will pray to the father and he will give you another helper because jesus's job was over he went back to be with his father his role was satisfied mm. he mm. set us straight for eternity there's no condemnation now for those who are in Christ Jesus. He says, I will get, I will pray to the father. He will give you a helper that he may abide with you forever. So the spirit of God, you remember the green in the picture? Those of us who are saved and we ask God to come in, live in our lives, heal us, clean us, help us follow you, help us live for you. That spirit fills you up and he says it will abide with you forever the spirit of truth helping that conscious know right from wrong the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him but you mm -hmm. know him for he dwells with you and will be in you mighty mighty right there in your soul, okay. right there, mixing in that conscious thinking, healing your mind, helping your emotions, helping your will. He's in there. Thank you, God. That's God, the Spirit's job. God lives in you, for lack of better terms. If you are his child, You've confessed yourself as a sinner. You said, Father, I need you. Come into my life. You may have prayed that prayer years ago, but you may not have been living how you should. It's never too late to recommit. But his children, his spirit lives on the inside of you. That's God, the Holy Spirit's job. God himself. You got the father's job, the son's job, and the Holy Spirit's job. So you want to know who talking. It's the spirit of God living inside of you. We don't always listen, but he in there. Mm. Okay. Why, why don't we listen, Reverend Cheryl? Because of that will. Mm -hmm. And that will wants to sit on the throne and be God of the soul. Mm. You may hear people say, your flesh your flesh mean your soul. Okay. That's what that means. So now, just a little backdrop. Now we're finna get into our lesson. Let me see who we got with us. To Neil. <laughs> Come on in here. Yes. Rain Holy Spirit. I know to Neil. I say that every day. Oh, you 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 give mother some kisses and hugs for us. <laughs> Dorothy and Esther, good morning to you. <laughs> and so now, sweet Brittany and Jennifer, Minister Edwards, let us get started. Prerequisites for hearing, prerequisites to hearing. Oh my goodness. Y'all get your Bibles because we're going to talk a minute. Prerequisites <laughs> for hearing. What is your motive for wanting to hear the voice of God? Ms. Linda, can you read that one, two, and three for me? Um, one is 
to follow his will. Two, to express your love toward him. Three, to surrender and obey. And I just kind of wanted to, to put that out there because um, we may not be thinking along those terms. Hmm. You know, I, I want to kindly put that out there. I know when I first desired to hear the voice of God as a young girl, I can't say that those were my motives. Yes. <laughs> we're just going to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm not telling you I started out in Jesus thinking, you know, most of the time it's just an innate, um, you hear the gospel maybe preached or you hear the gospel explained to you by a friend or you see somebody's life that's living, you know, um, according to the gospel of Jesus Christ and you admire that or, or you, God starts to draw you, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there's a, there begins to um, be a desire to just say, let me see what this is about. Let me get a little bit closer. Let me, let me go to one of these Bible studies. Maybe I'll join this church one day. Maybe I'll give my life to Christ one day. Amen. Amen. Let, me, let me keep talking to, um, for me, it was my godparents. And I wanted to be everywhere they were. And they were always at church. So, um. Um, and, and then my father, I would hear him praying. And I was like, wow, okay. So I'm wondering who's this God? I can't say that my motives for wanting to hear his voice started out like this. Amen. But now being well into a relationship and walk with him, um, and, and it may be some people talking who was not who are was not as young as I was when I got that desire, you may be full grown now. Hmm. So I can say to you clearly, because you're not a child. This is why we want to hear the voice of God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, you're yeah. not six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're not under 20. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. that first initial desire is I just need to do better. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is the this is a full-blown motive right here. Um, when you're your mature in age. And, and I'm gonna break it down to you to follow his will, to express your love toward him, to surrender and obey. Because, because when you're older and it's not those innocent interests, you know, you're just an innocent child trying to see what daddy talking about, see what granny talking about, see what, you know, all of these people are doing and let me just stick around because it sure does feel good. No, when you grown. Come on, Brad. Okay? When, you, when you of age, we got to make sure in our hearts and we get ready to talk to God that we have some things lined up in this commitment, in this relationship we want to get into with him. I yeah. want you guys to think about this. Um, <laughs> if you've ever was an uncle or an aunt or a big brother or a big sister or a parent and you're trying to explain something to somebody and they're not hearing you, mm -hmm. what is the first thing you do? I'm just going to stop talking. I'm just going to stop talking. Because you're not understanding. You're not listening. You don't want to understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. You be patient wow. with them for a little while. Then yeah. I'm going to be like, you know what? I just, maybe I need to be quiet and let you get it. Amen. Okay. My mother used to say to her, you're not listening. You're not listening. I done whooped you behind mm -hmm. and you're still not listening. All <laughs> right, life gonna have to teach you. <laughs> when mama got quiet, that was a scary thing. <laughs> that was a very scary thing. Yes, it was. Now, <laughs> take it out of my little crazy analogy and think about it. God knows your motive anyway. And if you come to God, oh my God, I want a husband, I want a car, I want a wife, I really need, I really need my business to get kicked off. 
Could you imagine him saying, that's the only reason why you want to hear from me? Mm-hmm. That's about you. That's not about a relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or, you know, I've been, I do biblical counseling 10 plus years now. Um, people come, well, God didn't answer my prayer. Da, 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 da. I was like, and those were your prayers? <laughs> And you're mad with God for not answering them? Talk to me about your relationship with God before you started asking for those things. And there's always dead silence. Yeah, 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 yeah. I really need you to, to put into your thinking an actual relationship. Mm-hmm. Not a, since I can't do it on my own and people say God is supernatural, let me see if he can make this pop out of the air for me. Mm. father i need you to come through because now you know somebody's gonna die or somebody's sick yeah. or or somebody needs you because a trial is coming i need you to come through for me and, and I'm, I'm not hearing from you god mm. the point i'm trying to make is start working on a relationship so that you don't get into a situation where you're trying to get him to speak to you or move for you and you have no earthly idea what he sounds like. Amen. You have no barometer of his moving through circumstances. You have no relationship or even better yet, you're not even saved. And so it's like, now I'm ready to hear from you because I'm in trouble. I want you to think about how you would feel if somebody did you like that. Right, right, right. Girl, I knew I met you in second grade, but now that we 35 years old, can I borrow $300? Hmm. you just like, well, first of all, I don't even remember you from second grade. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? And I'm being very candid with my analogies, but I want Mm -hmm. you to think about if you were God and you were approached that way. Right. Opposed to in peacetime in your life (laughs) and there's no fires lit, Mm. you can start building a relationship where you can learn his voice as the song said, the tones. She said, when I hear you calling, nothing else matters. Yeah. Ooh, when I feel you seeking me, all else be still. How is the <sighs> artist of that song able to say that? Because she got a relationship with That's right. That's right. When I hear your call, when you start to mature in God, you can get up in the middle of the night and you can know you up because he woke you up or you know you up because you got to go to the bathroom. Come on, Rare. Because you've become sensitive to him. One more analogy and we're going to move on. It's like a mother or father or auntie or even a daycare worker. And you got a whole bunch of little babies. Mm. Each one of them have a sound that can get your attention and none of them can speak English because you know the tones of their cry. Oh, oh, never mind. That boy just hungry. Or y'all go in there and give me that baby because some she hurt, something's wrong with her. Okay. You will start to know the tones of God. You will, you will become just that sensitive because that's how he created you. So prerequisites to hearing God is your motive for wanting to hear the voice of God to follow his will. Is your motive to express your love toward him? Is your motive to surrender and obey? Because if it is, get ready. Amen. If it's not, recalculate. 
and put some substance on your desire to hear his voice. I love that. And not just treat him like a Santa Claus or a, a, a heart surgeon or a lawyer because you're in trouble and you need him now. Okay. Let these things be your motive. And those are just words of wisdom of a chick that's been traveling this journey a long time and did not always do it right. Don't want him for what you need from him. Want him for him. Come on, Ray. You will hear clear. You will hear much more. Yeah. Well, Ray, what you talking about? All right. You know we got scripture to prove it. <laughs> Amen. So I hope and pray you write them down that you can study yeah. and meditate on this later and just don't think that I'm pulling this out of the air or I'm being, being rather curt about it or hard about it. There are so many like characteristics when it comes to how our father created us and how he actually operates. Of course, he's much more divine and much more incredible. Mm. But I've given you those little simple yeah. analogies. When you want to hear, it's much clearer. Why you want to hear, it's even louder. Yeah. I'm going to give you the story before me and Miss Linda gets into this scripture. God does this every time I get ready to teach because I'm the type of person, give me something real I can relate to. And as I try to do that in my little analogies that sometimes end up being very comical, this happened to me this week and I haven't had time to do anything with it, but praise God for it. There was a person, and I'm talking about the prerequisites to hearing. There was a person I counseled. It had to be over 10 years ago. Matter of fact, it was over 10 years ago. Now that I'm thinking about the time. And this person made a decision to get into a situation um, that they knew and I knew that God wasn't in it, okay? But to each his own and folks gonna do what they gonna do. Amen. Still had love for him, still talked with them, everything. 10 plus years. <laughs> I got a phone call and this person said, hello. Do you remember me? I said, absolutely. How I got the phone call, because again, it's been 10 plus years. Mm. They are now in a strain. I mean, a, a one their life depends on. Mm. Knows the Lord, walks with the Lord, relationship with the Lord. Let me say that ended up going to another church somewhere else in Houston. Somebody at that church knew me. This person was looking for a biblical counselor. That person recommended me. So when the said person called and my name popped up in the phone and their name popped up in my phone and I picked up, the person said, oh my God, and I said, how are you? All of that to say, this person needed clarity on something, that same thing we counseled about over 10 years ago. And I gave that clarity. That conversation lasted all of 20 minutes. But this was the thing that excited me and excited them. The person said, I see it now. Mm. What you're saying to me now, why couldn't you say 10 plus years ago? I said, because you didn't want to hear it. <laughs> wow. Now it's hitting you like a ton of marvelous divine bricks because you're ready to hear it. It was the truth then, it was the truth today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that person got to worshiping and glorifying and praising God. And so did I. And I said, I have a consistent prayer. And the person said, what is that? 
God, use me for your glory. And I don't know what that's going to look like. Mm. But today is evident because I can hear you glorifying him over this telephone. I say, so let this be a lesson. Always be willing to hear and obey. Ooh. What I said to you 10 plus years ago went through one end out the other. Mm. Today, it changed your life. Why? Because you were ready to hear it. That's right. That, I said, you know what? Thank you, because I got to teach Saturday. And, <laughs> and that's going to be right on time. Amen. All right. I'm going to read John 14. Let me back up some of this stuff I'm saying, and you just won't be like, that lady just, woo. <laughs> John, Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 19 through 20. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray to the Father, and the Father will give you a helper. And may he abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells within you and will be with you. I'm gonna stop right there. I wanna go back up to verse 16. No, 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 15, I'm sorry. Verse 15. Y'all stop me, cause my, my glasses is just, okay. I'm reading the wrong verses. Yeah. <laughs> John chapter 14, verse 19. I was reading the scriptures from earlier. Verse 19. Y'all come on here with me. Verse 19. We with you. We with there you. you go. Now you're with me. A little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live. I live. Mm -hmm. You will live also. And that the day you will know that I am in the Father you in me and I in you. In verse 21, he who has my commandments and keep them, it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself in him. Manifest myself in him. When he is manifested in you, mm. Go back to the soul now. When he's manifested in you, you can feel his spirit. You can, by way of your conscious, understand what he is saying, something is right or wrong. Amen. Okay? Amen. He's manifest. When something is made manifested, what it is, it's now real. Yeah. This room is dark. Manifest some light. Okay, flip on the switch. There mm -hmm. it is. We're dark on the inside. Christ comes in. He says, I, and manifest myself to him. Oh, Christ, there you are. Right there on the inside of me. Thank you, God. I will love him and manifest myself to him, who, the one who is keeping my commandments. So a prerequisite for hearing the voice of God is obedience. Amen. Verse 21, read it again. He who has my commandments and keep them. A lot of us have his commandments. The devil got his commandments. Don't mean he doing it. Amen. Keep them. Amen. Amen. It is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him because he's keeping my commandments. Amen. Prerequisite to surrender and obey. And, obey. and he said, I'm going to manifest myself to you. So if you're your own God doing everything you want to do and then you wonder why I can't hear God? Why I don't feel God? Why I can't see God? Because he ain't being made manifest to you. Mm. And Reverend Oliver just keeping it real. 
He ain't being made manifest to you. Amen. Only thing being made manifest to you is how wonderful you is. Mm. And whatever you want to do and whatever you want to feel and however you want to say it. So when we get upset, well, he ain't answering my prayer. I don't feel the Holy Spirit. I don't know what his voice sounds like. How you living? <laughs> Miss Linda, I Miss Linda sniggling on you. Oh, Lord. Yes. That's just that's just real talk. I don't I don't yes, have nothing else for you. Yes, it Come is. Come on, Tanil. Yes. yes. Come on in here, Michelle. You, I have nothing else for you. That's what his yeah. word says. John chapter 14, verse 21, highlight it. Prerequisite for hearing the voice of God. Yeah. He who has my commandments and keep them, mm. I will love him and manifest myself to him. Not he who do what he want to do. He who never prays. He who don't even know a commandment of mine. Speak true. That's what the words say. Miss Linda, what do Psalms tell us? So Psalms 32, the 32nd chapter and the 8th verse says, I will instruct you and instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Yes beautiful i'll instruct you i'll teach you mm. i will guide you with my eye i have a prayer that god the first of all that's a promise from our heavenly father mm -hmm. i have a prayer and those of you who are close to me know i pray it all the time father help me see it the way you see it yes father i need your perspective on this thing mm. You know why I pray that? Because of that verse Miss Linda just read. Mm. Um, and when I start to hear the comment from people, oh, I didn't see it like that. Or mm, you always have an interesting perspective. I said, thank you, God. Because he's answering that prayer. Okay, Because I'm coming from a place of one, two, and three. Mm. What does that Psalm 25 say, Miss Linda? Psalms, um, I'm sorry. Psalms 25, 25th chapter 14 verse says, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him and he will show them his covenant. Who's the secret of the Lord with? us those who fear him fear him yeah the secret of the lord over those who fear him amen father and to fear him is not like oh my god he's a he's a, a judgmental god that's gonna crush me and sentence me to hell that's not oh, what we're talking about it's a fear of reverence. It's a fear of respect. Okay. You know how you were growing up and your mother and father laid down the law and you went out somewhere playing or when you got older, may have went out with your friends in high school and there was some stuff you may have wanted to do, but you can kind of feel and hear their voice. And I'm not talking about auditably because they were not there. Yeah. That voice had planted down inside your consciousness. Mm. So your little friends might have been cutting up and cussing and stealing or, or at the club and doing whatever. And I used to just say to my girlfriend, I, had, I said, I'm not trying to deal with Bobby Allen when I got home. <laughs> my daddy, another whole dimension of not right. Okay. So y'all go ahead. I'm gonna go get in the car. <laughs> That's the fear. Yeah. It's reverential. You revere that person. You know they love you and they've given you some parameters. Mm. Don't go past this. Okay. So when when Miss Linda reads that verse and it says, those who fear the Lord. Yeah. 
Read it one more time. I love that. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him and he will show them his covenant. Bingo. Bingo. The secrets of the Lord, the covenants of the Lord, the deep things of God. Mm. He said, I'll reveal them to you. That's why you got to get your motive right. That's right. There's times we admire people of God or admire people, but, but there was a sacrifice attached to how they are with God. Come on, Rare. There was a sacrifice. Of, there was some right living added to that. There was some, no, I'm not going to do that. They listened to that spirit say no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That scripture just said he wants to for those who fear him. That's right. Those who act right. I could get my dad to do anything when I made all my curfews, house was clean, grades was good. I got all of the secrets of Bobby Joe Allen and that was his money. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. It wasn't nothing wild, but I could go get me some jeans and the new tennis shoe because I was doing right. That's right. I was living up under those things he caused me to fear. Yeah. Get home on time, bro. Get 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 your get your schoolwork. Okay. Don't don't cut up now because I'm gonna come get you. You know. And so he was able to say, okay, she's living that standard. Now let me. Amen. And I always make those comparisons from our heavenly Father to an earthly example because it's not that much different. Ooh. But God says his covenants, the secret things. Mm. But I'm going to reserve that for those who fear me. Okay. And then it says in John 7, verse 17, the gospel of John. Mm. If anyone wills to do my will, I shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak it on my own authority. Mm. All right. Okay, this, this, this is just amazing. If anyone wills to do his will, it becomes your will to do the will of the Father. Now that's some surrender, y'all. <laughs> that's right. I'm on this job. God, let me do your will today. I'm a mother or a father or a wife or what whatever i'm an auntie or grandmother whatever role you have in your family my will is to do that role according to your will for me in that role yeah i'm a college student i want to be the college student according to your will wherever you are in life you can do it according to god's will and it goes back and says if anyone wills to do his will mm. he mm. shall mm. know concerning the doctrine mm. what will you know you'll know whether it's from god or whether i speak it on my own authority the author is saying you're gonna know if god is speaking or you're gonna know if i'm talking trash that's right what makes you know the difference between god speaking and man speaking let me go back and read it because it's right here in the scripture if anyone wills to do his will he shall know concerning doctrine. Yeah. I pray that prayer with my boys. Father, let them not be manipulated. Let them not be falsely deceived. My prayer is that put in their hearts to do your will mm -hmm. so they can look at something and know if it's you or not. Mm. put in their hearts to do your will god so they can listen to a young girl and know is that is that for me or not Mama. Mama. you see how deep this thing goes this yeah. put put in me to do your will so i can listen to whomever and be like nah i don't quite know if that's true mm. and i don't care who it is I don't quite know if that's true. No. What gives you the ability to decipher 
You have already set down in your heart to do the will of God and not the will of men. Well, well, okay. So when you start to get some jibber jabber in your ear and you've already surrendered to God, I want your will, I want to do your will. You're like, oh, yeah. let me sit on that for a minute. Yeah. And when it comes, this is beautiful. Yeah, it is. He shall it know concerning easy. doctrine. And I'm going to get to that in the next slide. That's why you got to know his word. We're going to stop right there because I can go on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Linda, before we do move, though, read that John, the very last one, John 10, 27 through 28. John 10, 27 through 28. It reads, Whew, I, I love these verses. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. <laughs> right there. Oh, my sheep. My sheep, my sheep, prerequisite to hearing the voice of God. Are you his sheep? <laughs> that was real simple. You want to get this thing kicked off with God and want him to guide your, guard, guide your life, guide your decisions, guide your attachments. You just, you just been doing it on your own and what you're doing don't work. That's right. Root, step one, get saved. Because his sheep, that same person in the conversation kept saying over the years, and I kept hearing, and I kept hearing, and I kept <laughs> hearing, and all I could do was laugh. <laughs> Oh, God. The story I shared with you earlier, the person said, it's, it's, been, it's been over 10 years and I kept hearing and I kept hearing. Mm. So this person heard the voice of God. Yes. But not until this person was ready to surrender to it. That's right. Beautiful. All right, let's move. Preparation for the journey. Preparation for the journey. Y'all pray with me. Reverend Oliver gets strong sometimes. But it's strong, but I promise you, it ain't wrong. It's good. Yeah. Preparation for the journey. Let's see what you guys are saying. <laughs> to Neil, to Neil, you kill. Good morning, Mama Lou. So they'll say step number one. <laughs> good morning, Mama Lou. <laughs> See her on here. Good morning, Mama Lou. Good morning, Margaret. Good morning, Teresa. Miss mm. Dorothy. Good morning to you. Yes. Oh, God. All right. What does the voice of God sound like? Okay. So the last slide. Okay. Why do you want to hear the voice of God? We talked about your motive. Here, mm -hmm. preparing for the journey, asking for his help in preparing for the journey. Because it, it is and it's a beautiful journey of learning what he sounds like. It's a beautiful journey. I have so much to give you all in this lesson. I had to break it up into three parts because I just didn't want to overload your sensory circuits this morning with information because I could have. It says here, asking for help in preparing we just talked about motives for hearing God and understanding what is he sound like. Here we go. This is what we're going to ask him to help us with. Turning over lordship, turning over soul ties. Why? Why did you put this in here, Reverend Oliver? And again, I'm going to say to you, like I said with the last slide, this is not how I came to God. 
because I was a child. I was mm -hmm. what, six, seven. Um, I think the process started at six or seven. I probably didn't, didn't fully confess with my mouth to about 15 years old, but not until probably in my thirties or forties did the stuff come to fruition on these slides that I'm giving to you. So it's a process. But many of you watching that may be seeking a relationship with God, a deeper relationship with God, you may be saved and mm. you're just needing to recommit and grow. Then there's some who don't know him at all and you want to be saved. Right. Take the last slide that we just finished to heart because you're an adult, you're not a child. Here's another one that's an adult that a child wouldn't understand. Turn over lordship and turn over soul ties. Now, being a prerequisite and preparing for the journey to hear God, you have to be ready to deal with that thing you're attached to that you've been listening to. Mm. You got to be ready to detach from that thing or person or mindset or societal norm that you've been listening to, living for, and following. Amen. When I read number one and two, because if you want to hear his voice and his word and the doctrine and the secrets and covenants, all of that stuff we went through with those other scriptures, it's going to be in conflict with your mm -hmm. other lords and your other soul ties. Mm. And I'm not telling you this because I read it. I'm saying this because I live it. Amen. There are some things we're tied to in our soul. We're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you an example. Because that's just the way God made. I, I'm going to, I'm going to start, I'm going to start with my immediate household. I'm going to say husband and children. Soul ties. Okay. When I was on the journey of hearing him. Those soul ties, now here's some he severed, those he didn't sever. Mm -hmm. I had to hear him and learn how to reprioritize them. Because now he's God. Mm -hmm. That wasn't an easy process. the death of my father and some of the things me and God fought about. He said, oh, love him. He was supposed to, that's your dad. Um, but let me turn your heart upside down because I'm king. Mm. Put daddy where he belonged. Okay. And that's my little example of reparterizing Reparterization of soul ties that we are to have. Okay. And then there's some on this journey he had to sever mm. completely. Because they never should have been tied to my soul. Yeah. And soul ties have power. Yes. And he says, there will be no other God before me. Mm. no other god and so you ask for preparation of this journey of hearing the voice of god what does the voice of god sound like god i'm coming to you for help now because there are some things that have lordship in my life pride your way of doing things. God may go speak some things and come in and shake your foundation and tell you to sit down. <laughs> and you're going to have all kinds of out-of-body experiences, but you wanted to hear the voice of God. Right. Sit down and shut your mouth. But do you see? I see it and let it happen. Because mm. I'm going to work in the results of it, not before it happens. I'm going to need you just to be quiet. So you, you are no longer Lord. Things in your life are no longer Lord. 
oh my God, there's like a gazillion examples flooding my mind of the things in people's lives and including mine that had lordship. Yeah. So preparation for this journey of what does the voice of God sound like? Before we even get to that, check your motives and then ask him to help because the, 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 the conflict of truth that's going to come in and deal with your place of your own lordship, the place of your soul ties, the place of your fleshly pleasures, the place of your comfort zones, that's going to be busted wide open. <laughs> now, it don't come in all at one time because you lose your mind. But it's like, he's just like, okay, let's deal with this. I'm like, okay, God, thank you for freeing me from that. Okay, and now we on right. to this. Yeah. You got that one? Okay, now we on to this. Mm -hmm. You got that one? And let me tell you, I just called my soul sisters the other day. He's just now dealing with something that had a tie in me. I'm 50 years old will be next Wednesday. And my reaction to the revelation that this thing had lordship was come get it. Mm. Come get it. I see it. I feel it. I want to be free. You died for me to be free. Come get it. That's my reaction mm -hmm. to a soul tie at 50. That wasn't my reaction to soul ties at 30. I was like, Lord, but wait a minute. <laughs> that thing feel good, sound good, look good. And that's just what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was saying, fine, well, hang on to it. Because again, if we're not listening, he gonna stop talking. And then I will find myself coming back. You was right. I'm sorry. He said, yeah, but now you done lost some time, some strength and some other things. But I'm sure glad you let it go. Now let's keep moving. Okay. But at 50, now I got that much time. Come get it now. Rip it out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, here I am. Amen. Okay. So those of us who are starting this journey with God and we're being prepared to what does the voice of God sound like? Take this slide to heart. Ask for help in preparing for the journey. Start turning over lordships. Start turning over soul ties. You may know what they are because it may even be cutting you for me to say this because you already know he going to come get it. Mm -hmm. He loves you. Yes. He wants you free. He died for you to be free and at peace. Thank you. Resentment can be a soul tie. Bitterness, material things, a certain kind of life you want. People, lordships, you, you your worst lord. <laughs> or love from somebody else and oh my god if they don't approve of something you just crumble he coming for all of it so prepare oh jesus i mm -hmm. i remember a person and the light shone so bright when this person was ready to see how much lordship another person had in their soul. It was like an out of body experience, a whole mental breakdown, because first of all, they couldn't believe that that's how they had been living. And second of all, they have love for God, but didn't realize they had, somebody else had priority over God. And that's exactly mm -hmm. what it was. My, my. Mama. And when that thing had hurt this person so, it was devastating the hurt. Then they were able to see, I gave you too much power. Yeah, yeah. So let me say that to say this. Everything we put over God, lordship, soul ties, whatever you want to call it, demigods, that's what James called them, my son, demigods. <laughs> Those will be the things, right those will be the things, the people, the jobs, the attitude, the lifestyle, those will be the things to run you back to God. Yeah, yeah. Because they will fail you. They will hurt you, 
and they are not meant to be everlasting. So then when the floor comes from up under, all you had before God, then you're going to come looking for him. Amen. Ooh, okay. I'm going to read Matthew 16 and 24. You know, I love you now. Then Jesus said to the disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, hey, hmm. if you desire to come after me, yeah, you come in this way. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, I could just see Jesus walking up. Y'all coming this way? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Let him deny himself. Ooh, we pick up his cross. And all of ours is going to look a little different. And follow me. You coming this way? You mm. sure about that? Mm. You sure about that? All right, come on. Come on, pick up your cross. Pick up mm -hmm. your cross, baby, and come on. Count the cost for following me. But it'll never be a day of regret, my brothers and sisters. That's right. Absolutely. Once you get convinced yeah. and convicted yeah. that nothing in this life, nothing you have, no person is worth sacrificing your relationship and your walk with Christ. That's right. You Amen. will be just fine. That's right. Amen. If you didn't attach your heart to something you won't, 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 won't gotta have it, you might as well start unraveling yourself. Because that thing has become an idol. Hmm. That's that true. thing has become an idol. Miss Linda, read for me, Minister, Psalms 26 and 2. Yes, ma'am. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. <laughs> One more time. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. Amen. Yeah, that's bold right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'm afraid that one, Miss Lynn. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. You better know what you're saying when you say it. You better know what you're saying when you say that. Yeah. God, I love you and you alone. Try my mind and my heart. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm going to show you some other stuff you really love. Amen. I'm going to show you. Some. And, you know, the person in the Bible who stood that test was Job. Yes, he did. He stood that test. Yes, he did. Oh, he was devoted yes, to God. He, he said, God, give it. God, take it away. Yes, he did. Blessed be his name. Mm. Job was the epitome of a relationship with God. Because the enemy was like, all this stuff you've given Job, richest man in the land. That's the only reason why he praised you. God said, really? Mm. For real? I done tried his mind and his heart. I know he loved me. Go get it. Mm. go get it Job passed the test he ripped his clothes and worshipped his possessions his children's died he worshipped I don't know if I'd have ripped my clothes and worshipped uh yeah <laughs> I don't even want God to tell the enemy to even try me Ooh. come on now I don't know if I could stand that test real and then his little wife talking about, why don't you just curse God and die? He said, you mm -hmm. foolish woman, you foolish woman. <laughs> <laughs> Job had a relationship. He did. Okay. Yes, he did. So yes, I he just, did. Yeah. ooh, read that Psalms 26 and 2 again. Ooh. Exam, examine me, O oh Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. 
I don't have no more explanation for that. <laughs> it's self-explanatory. Oh, Jesus. And, and for lack of better terms, I know, Tanil, that's Linda cutting up. For <laughs> lack of better terms, you can't fool God with your motives. Oh, Lord. And if you've been traveling with us on Wednesday, we've been talking about it now for some time through Galatians, Colossians, and now we're in, we're in Matthew and we're in the kingdom and there's a theme coming through. He can care less about your outward actions. He wants intimacy with your heart and your mind. Say he right wants again. you saved and purified from the inside out. That's right. That was That's his right. problems with the law body, Pharisees, Sadducees, and the scribes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys got the actions down packed. Yeah. But your insides, I don't even recognize you. Mm. So in the Psalms, it's saying, try me. What is it saying? God, I want that heart. I want that mind. Yes. And if anything in it ain't right, heal uh -huh. it and touch it and purify it so Please, it glorifies God. you from the inside out. Please, God. That's why you got to prepare for this journey of hearing from him. Like I said earlier, we're not coming to God at six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, up to 15 years old. And maybe somebody's going to hear that young listening. God bless you. We have people of certain age. That's right. So the first slide, know your motive for wanting to hear his voice. This slide, prepare for the journey for hearing. And this is our last slide. Be intentional about making space. Slow down and pursue the desire to hear. And I got to be honest with you. This is a struggle. Yes, but this is. is where the, the, oh, the majestic beauty of transformation happens, y'all. Yes, it does. Absolutely. You, you, you got to do this. If you're going to discern his voice, hear his voice, understand his voice, know what it sounds like, you're going to make some still time. Mm -hmm. Or you just going to be um, a ADD Christian. Yeah. Now you don't know what you hear. Yeah. You have to be intentional. And over the years, these times have varied for me. They midnight, 3 a.m., 5 a.m., lunch breaks, whenever. Amen. Amen. What does the voice of God sound like? You have to slow down enough to learn it, mm -hmm. to feel it, to see it. Okay? I'm going to lead up by the time we're in the third lesson of hardcore factual things, because I know that may be what you want to hear. Mm. But there is so much work before you get to those hardcore factual things, because this is not a, a um, math class. No. The voice of God can sound like a mood. It can sound like nothing. Yeah. That's my real. It can sound like stillness. It can sound like a roaring lion. Mm. <laughs> it will always sound like his word. Mm. It'll sound like peace. In the song, when he says, it sounds like a loved one taking their last breath. Mm. I was at my grandfather's side when he was dying. My grandmother's side when she was dying. I know what he meant in that song. So let's not go through this lesson wanting just the facts because the truth of the matter is the voice of God is very abstract. You can hear it in a little baby's face. <laughs> you can hear it in the rain. Yep. We're going to get to some very concrete things by lesson three. 
But let's just make sure in this lesson, we're prepared to hear it. Be intentional about making space, slowing down, shutting out the busyness of life, making time for God. Now, I had to physically, and I still do, and I, I recommend that, I had to physically do this. And I would hear the people that I would study and spiritual leaders that I would admire would talk about. And when I say physically do it, there, I'm in a room in my home and I have a place that I go and I love candles, I love soft music and I just kind of get into a zone. But I admired my spiritual leaders talk about, they could be in an airport, they could be on a plane, they could be in a meeting mm. and zone out to be with God. And I just wasn't strong or mature enough to understand that until it happened to me. Um, and a place, that's a place of growth, that's a place of maturity, um, that everything could be moving on around you and you're like tunnel vision because you're talking with God or, or he's downloaded something in your, in your heart. And whatever's going on around you don't even matter. That's not my advice to try to get with God if you're just starting out right. in practicing making space for him. In the beginning, physically do it. Make space and time just for him. All right. Turn off the TV. Turn the phone off. Hmm. Okay? Go on. I remember when the kids was little, I used to have to go in the bathroom and lock the door. They would put their fingers under the bottom. You still in there? <laughs> but God knows. God knows. So shut out the business of life. Make time for him. All mm -hmm. right, Miss Linda, read that Isaiah 55 and 3. Yes, ma'am. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. Read the first part again. Incline your ear and come to me. Mm. Incline your ear and come to me. Mm. Incline your ear and then you come to me. When you have one of them in the middle of the midnight moments, you recognize that it's God. <laughs> you get up and shake off that sleep. Come on, Rare. And you start to incline your ear and then you go to him. And you see what daddy has to say. Yes. Yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll feel him wake you up out of your sleep. I thought of that when I read that verse, and I'm going to read the last verse, Matthew 11, 28. Let me see, Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. Here's that again. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and low in heart. You will find rest <laughs> for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. But the beginning of that verse is, come to me. Yes, it did. And you can read those verses I have for you there in between. He says, come to me, come to me, come to me. The visualization I get with the verse Isaiah and the verse in Matthew, I can remember my grandfather. And if we wanted something, whether we wanted some food or we wanted some money or we wanted to go with him somewhere and we loved him, we, we was just, anything was Christmas time was coming. We wanted him to buy anything. We would physically go to him and I would get in his lap. And he would look and say, what, what is it y'all want? 
And when I read those verses, that just brought a smile to my face. We were not trying to yell to him from outside, playing in the yard, through the house, down the hallway to tell him we needed something. Mm -hmm. We were not trying to talk to five, six, seven other people and, and still play our kickball game and tell Papa we needed something. And my grandmother would say, okay, I hear y'all plotting and planning, but you're going to have to go in there and ask it. So we get our little stuff together, try to get the dirt off of us, or whatever we was doing, the mud, and we would just go in there and just get close to him and smile at him and get in his lap. And sometime, listen, hear what I'm saying. Because he missed us. He would say, mm. okay, we're going to do that. But just sit right here. Mm. Oh, that, that'll mm. make me cry. Mm. And he would be watching the Wild Wild West or Perry Mason or Gunsmoke. And he'd say, <laughs> look at the clock. I ain't going to do it right now. But when my show is over. Mm. And there was so much peace in his arms and in his lap. By the time the show was over, we were asleep, just spit coming on down our face, down. <laughs> Y'all know in the country that house be about 68 Ooh, degrees cold. Rest. That's beautiful, Rev. Rest. <laughs> mm. But beautiful. we couldn't get that kind of peace. We couldn't even get Paul's attention out mm. running down the street. We were going to try to get his attention with a bullhorn because he couldn't hear that well. <laughs> we try to get his attention hollering from our side in the middle of our freeze tag game or something crazy. <laughs> Grandpa used to say, stop that foolishness. Go in there and talk to Roy. <laughs> So you got to make space. Mm. Jesus is much, much better than my granddaddy. He says, come to me. And this is what I'll give you. But the enemy is going to try to stop you from coming. You're going to get sleepy. The world going to fall down. The job going to need an extra report. You, you got to go spend, you got to go grocery shopping. You got to, I don't care what it is. If I could, at 50, sit my big old grown behind back in my grandfather's lap, I would. Amen. To hear him say, okay, we're not going to do it now. We're going to do it later. Just sit a while. Yeah. And it was so peaceful. There were times, oh, Jesus, I went to him and I didn't even want nothing. Wow. I just wanted that peace. Wow, wow. And he and I both will be asleep. I'll, I'll tell you this and we'll move on. I can remember because he was a big old man. I would go and lay across his stomach because it would go up like a mountain. <laughs> and come back down with him breathing. But it'll put you to, it'll put you to sleep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's just the peace the peace and much more that our father could give us if we just mm. came to him. That's right. But I was, we were not gonna hear my grandfather's answers if we weren't sitting right there in his face waiting for him to reply. Mm. Wow. And grandma will remind us, you, you know you're gonna go in there and ask him. Okay. Come wow. to him. Make space for it. Your desiring, pursue that desire. Mm. Anybody you want a relationship with, I'm just giving you my little crazy example. You're going to spend some time with them. You're going to make some space for them. You're going to say, okay, this evening is all yours. Okay? So let's not, the, the, the relationship we need more than any other, mm. give him second fiddle. And we're preparing to hear the voice of God. What does it sound like? You don't know because you won't slow down enough. That's right. I didn't know because I wouldn't slow down enough. Mm. Okay. Mm. So we have come to an end.
I pray you have been blessed. This will be yes. a three-part lesson. This is just what I needed to cover on the outskirts to pull it in to that powerful center. Mm. We could have started in a powerful center, but you wouldn't have had all you needed. So to God be the glory, to God be the glory. Miss mm -hmm. <clears throat> Linda was going to pray with us at the end of this slide for those of you who would like to come to Christ, um, have the opportunity for salvation. And she's going to pray with you after I read these scriptures and you just pray that prayer, believe down in your heart. Yes. And that's it. That's it. Salvation is just that type of of a decision in that nick of a moment. And these scriptures are found in Romans. All of these are in the book of Romans. Um, and they're paraphrased. Three and 23, all have sinned. So yeah. welcome. We're all in the same boat together. Right. Six right. and 23, the price for sin is death, but eternal life is a gift in Jesus Christ our Lord. Why? Mm -hmm. Because he paid the price. You were not good enough to pay this price. You can't work good enough to pay this price of the debt you owe because of your sin. And his free gift is eternal life. Chapter 5, verse 8. God loves us so much Christ died in our place. 10 and 9. If you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, Jesus is Lord. God raised him from the dead. You are saved. That's what Miss Linda's going to pray with you. Just that simple. Confess Amen. it and believe it. Yes. Because beliefs will guide your life. Five and one. Because of your belief in Christ, you have been made right with God. And you are at peace with God because of your belief in his son who died for your sin, now you're right with him. Nobody gets to the father, but through his son. Chapter eight, verse one, there is no heavy weight of wrong for those who live for Christ Jesus. And my favorite, chapter eight, verses 38 and 39, I am fully convinced neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor thing presence, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God in yes. Christ Jesus, our Lord. Whenever something says in Christ Jesus, our Lord, mm. just remember he's the person of the Trinity that paid the price. My God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. My God. We get to the Father by way of the Son and believing that the Son died in your place, confessing with your mouth that he is Lord. And once that happens by your confession and your belief, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, will set up home in your heart. Yes. Set up home in your spirit. And he will dwell there forever. Amen. Amen. Miss Linda, lead us in prayer. Oh, my God. My God. Um, first, I just want to say, I want to encourage those of you who are sick and tired of living in sin and just wanting to trust God and live with him. Reverend Oliver just gave a beautiful, beautiful teaching and lesson, encouraging you to pursue God, to pursue God. And as she used the scripture, come to him, all who labor and are heavy laden, and he will give you rest. He's calling you. He's calling you. All you have to do is say yes. I did it. I ran. I ran, I ran, ran, ran until one day I heard him call me and I said, yes. And then all you have to do is repeat this prayer with me. Dear God, I know that you love me. 
I'm tired of being sick and tired and scared and unsaved. I've tried doing things my way, living my way with no success. And now I want your way, God. I need you as my Lord and my Savior. I turn away from my sins and confess them unto you, God, this day. I place my faith and trust in you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. 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 And just like that, my brothers and sisters, Christ is yours. Now, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Get in touch with us if you are newly saved in your walk with Christ. Amen. We can connect you to a Bible teaching church, introduce you to a, a, a faithful pastor. We are a discipleship ministry. Please stay connected with us so that you can continue to grow. We will put you in contact and connect with a church so Amen. that you can gain a church family. You can become baptized and you can learn along with your church family as well. So here are opportunities for you to grow with us. Um, we have five. Every Wednesday, 5.30 a.m., we are Facebook Live for prayer moments, a brief Bible study followed by prayer. It lasts about 30 minutes. We're on Wednesday evenings at 9 p.m. Uh, conference call only. We will not be Facebook Live at 9 p.m. And that's your the conference call phone number, no access code needed. Our teaching sessions every second Saturday, 9.30 a.m. That's what you are participating in today. And thank you for being with us. We have soul healing sessions every fourth Thursday at 7 p.m. They do not disappoint from 7 to 7.30. We have a fall book study. Right now, we're actually studying, and I have my copy right here, Discerning the Voice of God by Priscilla Schreier how to recognize when God is speaking. And this is the inspiration for this teaching on today as well. Amen. So we are doing two chapters at a time. The next one, let me grab my calendar, is October the 16th. That's going to be next Saturday. Um, we will be going over chapter five and six. We're at chapter five and six, jump right in. Your host for that day will be um, Minister Linda Edwards, Minister, I don't mix y'all name up, Minister Linda Hewlett and Minister Jennifer Edwards. Forgive me, my sweet sisters, I didn't combine the names. We love you. <laughs> we love you. Minister Linda Hewlett and Minister Jennifer Edwards. So please join them as they host chapter five and six. It will not disappoint. And last but not least, our testimony interview. Um, we have a JMS, Just For My Soul, testimony interview coming on October the 30th at 9.30 a.m. It'll, it'll last from about 45 to, to minutes to an hour. You don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss that. That is actually a part of our mission to love and serve everybody to, through biblical teaching, personal testimonies, prayer and mentoring for the glory of God. When we were meeting in person, we always had somebody's testimony. I mean, life-changing testimonies. I wanted to bring that aspect to this virtual ministry back, that aspect of testimonies. That interview, I'm not going to even tell you who it is. You don't want to miss it. We will be posting invites to it soon. So join us on our social media streams. And so that you'll be prepared. You know when it is. You just need to be prepared for who it is and what they have to say. It's going to bless your heart. Contact us. These are all of our streams. Um, email, by phone, website, YouTube, all of those opportunities to grow I just introduced you to, they're on our YouTube channel teaching sessions, um, soul healing sessions, the testimony interviews, our prayer moments, 
they are all on our YouTube channel. We're on every social media stream. And of course, if you desire to give donations, I am so excited. And I want to thank y'all for your donations that come in to Just For My Soul Discipleship Ministries. We are about to embark on two major projects this fall. And you guys have made it possible. We want to thank you for um, the monies we were able to give the family whose home burned down. We Amen. are going to um, partner with Mary Kay. And we're going to get gift baskets of skin care to women who are suffering with breast cancer, or should I say surviving with breast cancer. Um, so I'm so excited about that. And also our connections with the Houston Food Bank. And also we're still partnering with those of the Gulf Coast and of course the hurricanes. We may, it may not be in the moves, news anymore, but that don't mean that individuals are not still hurting. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll always share with you what your donations are doing in this ministry. Amen. And so before we close out, I'm going to stop sharing my screen right quick. There we go. Miss Linda, before we say good afternoon to everybody and get out of here, is there anything you would like to say? I just want to close. Um, this was really, really good. For me, it was very personal, very personal. I say personal because if you don't know how to discern his voice, you've been introduced today. If you have been discerning his voice and sometimes getting in the way, you back on track today. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Right. Thank you, Jesus. Right, right. And it's always, even for those of us who walk with God, to get these mm -hmm. refreshers and reminders. Yes. Yes. Um, none of the stuff we get 100% and get it right That's every right. time. That's right. I'm so enjoying our journey back through Matthew chapter five and kingdom mm -hmm. teachings. Mm -hmm. um, so this was a wonderful refresher for some, and it was a wonderful introduction for others. Yes. What does the voice of God sound like? It was beautiful. So stick with us. Be with us um, November and December, our second Saturday teaching session, so we can go ahead and close it out. And then you have the full package. And the join one. us for this book study. The next teaching session wrap is November 13th. November 13th. November 13th, part two. And also join us for the JMS book study. Amen. And between the two, it's going to take your relationship to new heights. Amen. Amen. You all be blessed. Thank you for joining us today. We love you. And you yes. have a good Saturday. Bye-bye for now. Let me...